I think we were very clear, um, more so, more than just the demands we made, the things we want. I think we were even more clear about the fact that we're not playing, about the fact that you know, the, the desperation in our neighborhoods has actually led us to really begin to truly put the efforts in to build a movement. Um, we're not going to be say that the movement is ready, but we are. it is building. It is definitely building. So I think they got that message today. You know what I mean? And, and so the, the status quo responses, we respect you, we hear you, it's not going to wash. So they began saying, well, we think we want to work with you on sustainable school transformation. Uh, you know, we, we think we, we're definitely going to investigate the Title VI complaints. Racism is real. We acknowledge it. So I think that's a step forward. But our work is going to be to push them on the policy things we want and then to continue to build what we see as this movement. I just want to ask you, so you've been, you've been fighting the same policies in Chicago. Yes, sir. Pretty much longer than everybody. And now you're fighting them on a national scale to the federal government. Now Arnie Duncan's in, in charge of that DOE. Yes, sir. Can you sir. just kind of comment on that? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's frustrating because, you know, at the end of the day, we, people are willing to pay their own way to get here. People are willing to jump on buses. People are willing to drive in vans because their lives have been affected. You know what I mean? So when all the cameras go off, when all this happens, you know, I've gone to funerals of young people who've lost their lives or because they went, they went to school in a different neighborhood. Or I've organized a parent patrol, you know, to try to address violence that was caused by closing the school and moving young people into a receiving school. So because of that, I think the frustration is they're just going to do harm everywhere. <laughs> and it's like, you know, and it, but it, it's clarifying. It lets you know what you have to do. So in Chicago in 2011, uh, we had epic uh, protests. You know, we marched 700 people to the mayor's house. We did a four-day sit-in at, at, the, at the city hall. But it didn't matter because the administration was hell-bent on carrying the corporate, the corporate community's water by shutting down our schools. So we realized we've got to build this national piece that is going to be committed for the long haul, you know, to do the type of direct action that actually, unfortunately, um, embarrasses the United States to say this type of racism exists in our country. So it's frustrating to answer your question, but it's also, uh, uh, it, 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 it kind of lights a fire under you because you know if they accelerate what they've already done in our neighborhoods, you know, it's, it's scary. I mean, it's scary what's, what types of things are going to happen, you know? And so, so talk about the importance of, uh, of the federal government taking action. I know in Chicago they want to close down 100 schools this year. Yeah. And they're doing the same kind of things in New York, like 50 schools in New yeah. York. It's happening all over the country this year. They're still yeah. happening. Yeah. I mean, I think if they don't take action, uh, wh what happens is the same policies that have really worked to destabilize communities that are already struggling, you know, will accelerate and, and, and communities will lose hope. You know, when you loop with a, a school in a neighborhood is to some degree a symbol of hope, you know what I mean, in the neighborhood. Again, example, my father uh, dropped out of school in the ninth grade. He was, a, he was a steel worker. But in my neighborhood, I had a good elementary school, and he sent me to that school, and it was a symbol of hope for us. He used to walk me to the school and expect me to do better than him, right? So can I send my son to the school in our neighborhood when the schools are worse now than when I was in school? And my son do better than me? That's what's at stake. You know, you're, you're looking at communities being destroyed by these policies. So if the federal government doesn't act, we're going to go international. We will take this to the United Nations. We will take this to whatever um, uh, venue we have to, to raise this as a human rights issue. It's serious, man. It, this is not a game. This is, this is, you know, looking at communities that are being ripped apart. And because of, you know, institutional racism, we accept it because some of our perceptions of black people and brown people. So we, we figure, oh, no, but no, you see these children that were here today. These children care deeply about their education. They want a future, you know, and some of them, instead of going to school, they're not down here on vacation. They working, <laughs> you know, they, and they are pushing. You have children that have filed Title VI civil rights complaints. You know, these are children that are supposed to be trying to go on prom, and, you know, and stuff like this, and they on the battlefield. 
You know what I mean? So this is not a game. And I think that if the federal government did not get the message today that something is bubbling in the United States, then they're blind because it is, it is growing. Outrage is everywhere. Thank you so much. All right, Jess, I'll thank you.